Hey, hey, everybody. For today's problem, day 13 of the Leak Code Daily Challenge, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's problem. Uh, I'm going to do this, uh, all, all candidates, until the candidates is done. So uh, <laughs> let me know in the comments. Today's problem is 85 maximal rectangle. Given rows of zeros and ones, find the largest rectangle containing only ones and return its area. Okay, and is uh, uh, are we just doing like classic problems? I mean, I don't know. To be honest, this is not that bad, but it's just, uh, mm, it's just um, what did I say? It's just annoying to explain and stuff like that. I, I feel like I've done it a few times, so I gotta know it. But the core idea here, uh, and there are a couple of ways you can go about it, right? Um, the core, the first thing that is noticing that N or, or N C is less than two hundred, and yeah, so you have to be a little bit careful. You cannot do R square times C square. That's too slow, which is the number of rectangles you have. Um, so how would you do this? Well, how would we do a one one dimensional one, right? I think I did this the last time we we had this. Let me kind of find it out real quick. How would you have a one-dimensional one, right? Well, a one-dimensional one is pretty straightforward, right? It is just... If it's one-dimensional, you just get the longest consecutive thing, right? So then, here, just by the same idea, if you're able to to just... Let me, uh, let me just draw it out instead of saying it. Hang on. So I, I don't know, uh, I feel like I'm not giving that much effort on this one a little bit just because I feel like I've done this a few times and I feel like in the past I've done it the good way, right? So basically let's say you have one dimension, one dimension, right? And you have ones and zeros. And then the obvious thing is that it's just the longest sequences of ones in together, right? So by the same logic you can, or by a similar logic, if instead of one dimension, you have two dimensions, oops. Instead of one dimension, you have two dimensions, right? And you have like, um, you know, one, do, 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 right? Something like that. Then the idea here is that, okay, let's say we combine the columns together down, right? So here, we say that this is a zero because it's not all ones. So then now we compress it to one, zero, zero, one, 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 right? And then now, what's the biggest rectangle given we try to use every column? Well, the biggest rectangle trying that, that we're trying to use the biggest column is going to be just four cells, right? Of course, we know that it contains three columns. So this is actually representing 12 cells. So that's basically the idea. And once you realize that you can do this, then it is just about abusing the constraints, right? And the constraints is that, all, like we said, all times C or all squared times C squared is too slow. However, if you are able to reduce that to all squared times C, that may be fast enough, especially since it's not specifically all squared times C. It's like all squared over two times C because it's all choose two times C, right? So that's going to be fast enough. And the idea here is that. And you can do this for columns. It doesn't really matter R squared times C or C, C squared times R. Um, I mean, I guess in theory, if you're really optimizing, you would just take the lower one for the square part for obvious reasons. But but, but we'll just skip that for now. Um, yeah, so then the, the idea here is that, okay. So then now for, let's say top row, right? In range of R. For bottom row in range of top R, right? Something like this. And then now we just go diagonal, right? Is um, maybe we start with how do I want to say? It? Oops, like current is equal to zero, right? And then now we say for c uh, for y in range of c, right? So then now if that let's just say for 
and I'm writing this is pseudo code, not real code yet, right? So let's say we'll be able to get if from top to bottom of row y, if all of these is one, then we increment by one, right? Uh, and maybe we have a best best is equal to zero, right? And then now best is equal to max, best current because now we have um, oh oops. And then this is else current ooh. else current is equal to zero, right? So this is just pretending this is one dimension. Um, and maybe I would get write this as um, if get top bottom y, right? Is equal to one, then we you know we do is equal to one. Otherwise, it's current except for that it has um, times bottom minus top plus one number of rows right so uh yeah so this is the row or this is the column and this is the row so that you get the entire rectangle and yeah and then at the end we return best so that's you know that's okay right like we said this is all choose two times c it's going to be fast enough hopefully if not then i have to try to do it another way but yeah but then now we have to make sure that this is fast right because if this takes any more time we're already running low on time. R squared times C, with them being 200, is already 8 million, even if it's choose two, which makes it 4 million-ish. 4 million but that means that even if this is log n, that would be too slow. So we have to get something faster. So then now, what does this get function do, right? Top, bottom, y, right? This function is, um, are all cells between top and bottom rows top and bottom rows on column y once right and maybe you could, this could return true instead uh, uh maybe i'll just call it all once maybe right so that returns true force right more sub more descriptive and of course if we do a loop here like the the naive solution is just to loop from top to bottom and just check on column y of course that is too slow that i mean that's a loop we want something faster and the idea behind the something faster part is the dynamic programming thing with uh um is it called prefix sum i don't even know man i'm blanking out but it's basically a two-dimensional prefix sum right so the idea behind a two-dimensional prefix sum is that, bringing back the drawing thing real, real quick, is that, okay, let's say, and in this particular case, oh no, huh, I guess we don't need a pre prefix, or we don't need a two-dimensional prefix sum. I think it, honestly, I think I usually have done it this way, but actually maybe we don't need it, right? We just now, just count. Would, you, would we just do a, a cause the way that we wrote it, we're just going down um down, right? So we're going like we said, we get we'll do something like four x in range from top to to bottom plus one, right? If if matrix of x is uh of y is equal to zero, then we return false, we return true, right? But here we can use prefix sum to to reduce this. Because basically, um, yeah, basically the idea is that for each column, you know, if you have something like this, right, uh, uh, let's add one more once in here, right, and then the prefix sum is going to be 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 7, 8, dot, 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 right, and then the idea here is that, well, the, the you just count the number of spaces you have and the number of ones you have, right? So for example, there's three ones, so four minus one is gonna be three, and that's how you get it. That that's very basic prefix sum, and we just need to do it for every column. And so let's set that up, right? So pre prefix sum or column sum maybe, I don't know, it doesn't really matter, right? Um <clears throat> it goes to so we have uh, times c plus one for uh, something like this, right? And then now we just have to set it up, right? So for x in range of r, for y in range of c, a uh, column sub 
Mm. Hmm. Maybe I wrote this a little bit awkwardly, to be honest. But mm, okay, whatever. Uh, this we added to is you go to columns sub x y plus matrix of x y, right? Yeah, right. So that's basically the idea so that we kind of sum it all up. And then now we can reduce this thing to just returning rather the columns of um, bottom is the one of the more, right? Y minus columns sub top of Y is equal to um, bottom minus top plus one, right? Something like this. Maybe I'm off by one, but that's the general idea. I'm, I'm off by one a lot because I'm just kind of going pretty fast. Let's give it a spin. All right. Uh, what happened? Oh, these are strings. That's weird. Okay, fine. Easy fix. All right, so that looks good for this input. I don't know if this is right, but I am lazy enough to just click on some mid versus giving more inputs. So let's see. And there you go. Uh, yeah. Apparently, there are faster ways. What is the faster way? I feel like proof force. Okay, that's not it. Uh, histograms and stack. Huh. Oh, I feel like I have done it that way before. Wow, today I'm just kind of lazy then. I have, I mean, eh, that's how you do like the uh, the skyline problem, right? So I guess you could kind of do it that way. I didn't think that the complexity would be that. No, no, no. Did I not? Hmm. Well, apparently you could have done it that way. So, uh, yeah. Oh, that is the largest rectangle on histogram. Hmm. Maybe I should learn that one. I don't know that one. I mean, uh, maybe I could figure it out. But, uh, but that's all I have for today. So uh, maybe we'll have to figure out the, the stack solution the other time. But, uh, but not going to lie, I am tired. So I'm going to call it a night. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments if you did it the other way. Stay good. Stay healthy. To oh, let's go over the compactor. We already talked about it, right? So it's R squared times C uh, and everything else, you know, it's get dominated by it. That's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Stay good, stay healthy, take your mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.